this episode of Modern Greaser, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone and I'm gonna show you this nice Harley Davidson. We are looking at a Hayabusa, a Suzuki Hayabusa. It is the fastest production bike made. And do I know anything about motorcycles? No, but tell you what, I'm still gonna bring you a sweet video on one and this is the legendary bike. I remember hearing about this bike 20 years ago and everybody's like, yeah, the Hayabusa, the Hayabusa, cause it's as big as you can get. This is the bike you wanna see and we're gonna check it out. So the reason that Suzuki Hayabusa is so legendary is because this thing has a 1340cc engine packed between my legs right now. This thing rips. If you can't say Hayabusa, you can actually call it the GSX 1300R. The first generations of Hayabusa ran from 1999 until 2007, and the second generation runs from 2008 until present day. So this Hayabusa has a 1340cc engine. It's a dual overhead cam, it's 16 valves, and it's on a bike that weighs 592 pounds wet. I had a 16 valve dual overhead cam engine in my Saturn. Yeah, it was a four door car. So to give you any idea, they take these Hayabusa engines and they don't just put them in bikes. They actually put them in cars and different other types of applications to go fast. They're a really well-built engine that can spin really crazy high RPMs. I mean, it's a motorcycle engine, so what, what's the limitations? There are none. Put a Hayabusa engine on a skateboard. I'm okay with that. Put a Hayabusa engine on a tricycle. Put a Hayabusa engine on a big wheel. Put a Hayabusa engine on a set of rollerblades. Put a Hayabusa engine in the back of my 4Runner. Put a Hayabusa engine on a Hayabusa engine in a Hayabusa. Ving, 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 ving. No, no, no. It's, I, do you think a, a little guy like me could handle a bike of this size? No. I'm, uh, I'm sitting on it, kind of. And that's about it. Luckily, there's a kickstand here. This is a massive bike. If you get a chance to get a hold of one of these, you're gonna see that there's a whole lot of bike here. The 1999 model Hayabusa had a top speed between 188 and 194 miles an hour. Being that 194 miles an hour is a little too fast, they decided to start governing the bikes at 188. I think there's a little variance in there for the miles per hour, but in that range to uh, keep it under 200. This bike, has three different modes on it. You can put it in mode A, which is all 1,340 cc's unleashed, which is a lot to handle. And if you're like, well, I'm just gonna go up to the store and buy some more e-vape or whatever it is that you kids buy these days, you can put it in B mode, and that'll give you 900 cc. And if you're a grandma and you're taking the bike around the block, you might wanna put it in C mode, and that'll tune this baby down to a nice calm 600 cc. But if you're like me, you need a 200, CC moped, you're not gonna get it in this package. So I'm gonna get off this before I knock it over because I am not man enough to sit on this sweet bike. In competitive motorsports, we're gonna go way far above and beyond what that governor limits the bike to. You can get 700 horsepower on one of these bikes easily. Add a turbocharger, add some nitrous oxide, and you're in good shape. Top speeds of over 270 miles an hour have been reached in competitive racing sports and a new top land speed record was set in 2011 at 311.9 miles an hour from a standing start to 1.5 miles and that is wicked fast. This 2017 Hayabusa has a aftermarket carbon fiber Yoshimura, damn it, Yoshihira, no, dang it, has Yoshiminga this bike has some Yoshihira. No, this bike has Hiroshimiya. This bike has Yoshima exhaust on it. I just, I just said Yoshimira. Yoshi. No, that's what it is. Yo this bike is equipped with 600. Yoshi. This bike is equipped with $1,200 worth of Hiroshima. He Yosh. This, this bike is equipped with $1,200 of Yoshimira carbon fiber exhaust. I am like a bike expert and you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> a stock Hayabusa puts down 197 horsepower. That's pretty darn good. 172 of that is rear wheel horsepower at 10,100 revolutions per minute. That is a lot of RPMs, right? 
it's a lot. Gotta love motorcycles. Torque comes in at 102 foot pounds. So another thing that makes this Hayabusa special, it's got carbon fiber all over the place. It's got carbon fiber back here, which is an addition. It's got carbon fiber over here, over here, over there, over here, over there, over there, over here. It's got custom painted pegs. This bike is pretty tricked out. Uh, that was pretty stupid. Okay, so what's really cool about this Hayabusa is that a lot of these fairings are actually carbon fiber. The housing for the taillights are carbon fiber, the different covers are carbon fiber, the mirrors are carbon fiber. So this thing has got all kinds of cool tricked out features on it. It also has some different color coded pegs, which are a two-tone, uh, which the owner of this are actually gonna change out. There's some kind of two-tone paint on it. Um, but it's a really good looking bike. So, so this Hayabusa also has a carbon fiber front fender and legendary Brembo brakes. So I'm not gonna pretend I know anything about the transmission on this bike, but according to ye olde internet, the transmission, gotta look right here, is a chain-driven six-speed with a slipper clutch. Whatever that means, to you guys that know what that means, that's what it is. This bitch redlines at 13K, the speedometer goes up to 185, but this one doesn't have a governor. Thank goodness, that way you can go all of 200 miles an hour. And if you got a little tailwind, make that 210 miles an hour. So if 185 miles an hour isn't fast enough for you, which a lot of people it definitely isn't, you can just flash the CPU like this one, remove the governor so you can do your 200 down the highway, which, which is good. So Koji Yoshira, which kind of sounds like the exhaust, Yoshimira, hmm. Koji Yoshira was one of the principal designers behind the bike and came back to redesign the bike. And Koji hit up a lot of the custom bike scene and he drew a lot of his influence from all the custom tricked out bikes to try to make the new revisions in 2008. And he said not only did he take the revisions from the custom styles of the bike, he took it from the riders themselves, the biceps, their calves, their shoulders, because all these riders were like ripped and cool and bro -y and the exact opposite of modern greaser. These are like cool dudes. So the bike's kind of masculine looking and that's what he got his inspiration from, from the bros that ride them. They should do that with Honda Civics. Can you imagine how nerdy Honda Civics would look if they started designing them after the, the drivers? They'd have like weird glasses and pocket protectors. I drove a Civic, I can say that, thank you. So other cosmetics that took place in 2008 was a higher windscreen. It had the gauges were all kind of connected together, interlocking gauges. They had a digital speedometer, uh, a shift light, and new gear indicator. So that's for all the cosmetic changes that came in 2008 on top of all the things that Koji came through and did um, after he perused the bike scene for a while. So Hayabusa has a large custom scene. Wait till you see some of the stuff they have. They have Freddy Krueger bikes, they have Ben Franklin's, which is bling bling type of bikes. You can really get even more, which is scary, because I mean, this bike is <laughs> capable of going over 200 miles an hour and it's a lot of power that you're riding on, but you can make them go even faster. Just add what we call a turbocharger or nitrous. I know you just say that passingly, like, hey, I'm gonna add turbo, add nitrous. Well, you can on a Hayabusa, and you can get uh, 250 from horsepower from turbocharging it, and about 100 from nitrous. Even police forces have recruited the efforts of the Hayabusa for their legendary badassery and going out in pursuit of things, and kind of showing them off and things like that. <laughs> Why, hello there. You caught me with my vast array of car parts in the bed of my truck. No, these boxes aren't a sign that I've become a hoarder. So what's lurking inside all these boxes are all the essential things to do the disc brake conversion. I'm doing a two and a half inch spindle drop because Eaton Detroit Springs sent over some coil springs that are the right weight for the truck. So that video is gonna be coming at you here real quick because now we're gonna set it down a little bit lower with the spindles and we're gonna decide if we need to cut the springs a little bit. So we'll walk you through all that. And what's really gonna be cool is that in order to run the power brake booster on this truck, I had to go with a vacuum canister pump. So we're gonna go down that road because this truck doesn't have any vacuum that it's making itself. So we are gonna make our own vacuums. So thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Modern Greaser. You guys gotta check out my brother's Hayabusa. This thing was a fun thing to film. I've never filmed a motorcycle, but I'd be ready to do another one. It was pretty cool to actually do it. So be sure to hit that like button if you liked this video. Be sure to hit that like button if you hated this video. And make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking the button that says subscribe. Bing, 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 bing. Make sure you do that. Did somebody order a 1963 diesel medium rare? Because I got it. It's right here. 
Mmm, delicious. I'm not actually gonna lick the bumper. This thing has so much soot coming off of it, it's like licking the little engine that could. It's not happening. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm disgusting, but that's absolutely disgusting. Because Koji Yoshi Yoshihira, so Koji Yoshihira Yoshira, and I had a Saturn in high school that was tricked out with rims, so. I have nowhere to talk about cars. I'm just gonna say that. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I know anything about bikes. I'm just reading numbers that I found on the old internet. And tell you what, it's fun to learn. I went through and was reading this stuff and learned a whole bunch about this bike, so might as well share it with y'all. 